Today I'm going to show you how I made this 1 to 26 scale diorama of an incident involving Fabio Lanzoni, a roller coaster, and a Canadian goose. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you how it can be yours. I began by sculpting a one-to-one -one scale portrait of Fabio in wet clay, using a cutout of his profile to set the proportions of his face. You may have noticed at the start I said Canadian goose rather than Canada goose. According to the bird's Wikipedia page, calling it a Canadian goose may annoy some birders, but I refuse to say Canada goose as much as I'd refuse to say Ireland stew or Mexico standoff or the America Association of Birders can go fuck themselves. This incident took place in Bush Gardens in America in 1999. It was the opening of a new roller coaster called Apollo's Chariot. So, as a publicity spot, male model and absolute heartthrob Fabio Lanzoni was hired to represent Apollo and he was flanked by 35 women dressed in togas as Greek goddesses. The roller coaster took off and when it returned Fabio's face was covered in blood from a wound on the right side of his nose. It turns out a six pound Canadian goose flew into the path of the roller coaster and hit Fabio directly into the face. The incident gained huge attention and Fabio later went on to warn of the dangers of goose-based roller coaster accidents. It wasn't a freak accident and it's going to happen again. And you know, I cannot live with my conscience knowing that the ride is still running and maybe, you know, a child can be killed. Uh, I feel sorry for Fabio when I watch that footage. No one wants a ghost to the face. Unless that's your fetish. Ugh. You shouldn't fetishize animals anyway, it's wrong. It's illegal, even if you don't think it's wrong. You know, you, you can't have sex with animals. You can own them, you can kill them, you can eat them, but you can't fuck them. Because of walk. And there he is. Fabio! Next, it was time to make a roller coaster. I did this using some Brendan board, which I cut out and glued, and filled using some husband paste, and sanded by candlelight, as per my fate. I also later cut these little fellows, which hold the track in place while I glued it, and then I snapped off the excess plastic. Then I sanded it, and primed it, did a pagan rave, and then I added some details. By the time of the incident, Fabio had appeared on the cover of hundreds of sexy books due to his daring good looks and chiseled physique. And I wondered if I had what it took to make it on the cover of an erotic novella. So I called round to my actor friend Brian and once we had finished yet another argument about the Norwegian monarchy, we took some beautiful pictures. Then I emailed them to over 20 publishers of erotic fiction, but none of them were interested. Presumably because I don't have the kind of body that's desired by women or literate homosexuals. So I decided to start a strict workout routine. Thankfully, the manager of Odyssey Studios, Kieran Cook, is a certified personal trainer. There's even a little gym in the studio. He agreed to train me four nights a week. <laughs> Until he texted me to say that he had to cancel the sessions because a big job had come in that required discretion from the client, so it was employees only for a while. But what Kieran doesn't know is I have access to the Odyssey Dropbox, and I know for a fact he's just working on his magic portfolio. Next, I drew the carriage chassis. Next, I drew the carriage chassis. Blah. Next, I drew the carriage sashi. Ah, uh, fucked it. I 3D printed one and then I made a mold using silicone. 
and then I fill the mould with resin or thick paste, whatever you prefer. And then I painted them. I chose to capture the moment right before the goose made impact. This is because Fabio later claimed that the goose didn't hit him, but rather the goose hit a video camera that was mounted to the front of the roller coaster. One of the goose hit the camera, the video camera, and a piece of video camera barely slash the bridge of my nose. This seems to me like a brazen attempt to sue Bush Gardens, because as much as we'd love to experience it, you can't take a ghost to court. I imagine such a court case would call for some witnesses, namely the women who were sitting in the front row with Fabio. I tried to get in touch with them to see if I could learn the truth, but my perusal of Reddit fell short, so I decided to employ the services of a professional and reached out to the private detectives at East Coast Investigations. I chose them not only because they have great reviews, but also because their logo is Sherlock Holmes, which I think adds a touch of trustworthy class. Their private detective team searched through over 100 court cases with Bush Gardens listed as the defendant in the Williamsburg County Civil Court, but they were unable to make contact with anyone who witnessed the incident. But in their defense, it was 1999. Next, I cut a seat from some Brendan board. I put that into some boiling water to heat it up and then I bent it around this form. Then I shaped it, ground out the arse plate and I made a silicone mould of a few of them. I cast 36 of these cunts which I glued onto the carriage chassis and painted delicately. Then I made some roller coaster wheels in Fusion 360 and I printed a whole heap of them. I still wanted to be on the cover of a romance novel, so I tried getting some steroids from my Uncle Willie, but he's still sour with me for ruining Christmas. Film. Three words. Three words. There you go. So I knew I needed to hire a proper personal trainer, one who wasn't full of shit. This is Claire Burns. Claire thought the project sounded interesting and agreed to start a fitness program, which began with me taking creatine monohydrate tablets, which Claire assures me, contrary to Kieran's guidance, are taken orally. So thanks to Claire, I had put on 700 grams of muscle, which I felt was enough to try again with the romance publishers. I thought as well I should hire a professional photographer who specialises in erotic photography, the news of which eventually made its way back to my actor friend Brian. Good ungrateful little prick. You think I enjoy going out to my garden, taking photographs of your fucking scrawny... This is Natalie Greer, Ireland's foremost boudoir photographer. She met me on La Hinch Beach, where she took some truly dazzling captures of me looking in the best shape of my life. I couldn't decide which one of them was best, so I attached all of them to the email and sent them again to the over 20 erotic publishers. But again, I was met with silence or disinterest, which was a devastating blow to my self-esteem. Next, I made the front of the roller coaster, which is called the Boober. And I adorned it with this golden logo. And then I made that little platform upon which the video camera was strapped. I spoke to vintage camera expert Merrick from Tech to Remember, who said it was likely a Sony PD-150 which was a popular camcorder back in 1999. Incidentally, the footage from this camera has never been released, which meant I had to pursue other avenues to get to the truth of what really happened on that day. So I decided to employ the services of a professional. This is forensic lip reader Jeremy Freeman. 
Jeremy analysed the footage and was able to extract some of the dialogue between Fabio and the other passengers. He provided me with the transcript, which allowed me to dub over the footage with voices provided by my actor friend Brian. Fucking hell. You're safe. We're okay. Sure. It's fine. Your hair's okay. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh. Stinks. Did it face? Came right in. A bird. Gosh, whoa, well, I didn't see. Oh my, a bird? So as you can see, there was in fact mention of a bird. But uh, they didn't say for certain that it struck him or whether it was a piece of camera that struck Fabio. Leaving this mystery still unsolved. For the roller coaster women, I just downloaded some ladies off the internet and had 3D modeler Laura Hurtado me this. Add some details and uh, give some more appropriate roller coaster y poses. But the three women at the front would have seen the approaching ghost, so I wanted them to have a very particular expression on their faces, one that falls exactly between joy and concern. To achieve this, I asked three associates of my sister to join me in Odyssey Studios where we set up a scanning rig to capture their reactions. I wanted the expression to be real, so I played footage from the front of a roller coaster and had them react to it. Unbeknownst to the women, I had recently employed the services of a professional who helped me obtain photographs of their bank statements, which I then flashed upon the screen. This allowed me to capture the perfect moment between joy and concern. I asked Laura Hurtado Medas to place the new faces onto the bodies, but she said she had to go to Spain for a family emergency. So I asked film director and visual effects specialist Ray Sullivan to help me. Ray and I have been making stuff for each other for about 10 years now. He'll make me a pirate ship for my film. I'll make a puppet for his film. He'll make a planet for my film. I'll make a bomb for his film. He convinced me to stop editing Norway's Wikipedia page. I did motion capture for his film. So Ray finished the women and then I printed 35 of them. Then I gave them a lick of primer and painted their details. Let's just enjoy this moment. Mm. I'd like to say I wasn't haunted by the fact that I didn't make it onto the cover of a romance novel. But I was. After all the work I put into the fitness programs, after all the work I put into my body, only to be snubbed was, uh, was a disaster. So I decided if I wanted to be on the front of an erotic novella, I was going to have to write my own. Set on the west coast of Ireland, in the past, the power of the strength of the heart tells the story of Robbie Mulligan, an attractive man who returns from the big Ireland v England war to try and win the heart of his true love, Shirley Boland. Here is an excerpt read by the author. The big steaming train groaned chubbily into the yawning darkness of the waiting tunnel. Its sturdy length slipped smoothly between the wispy white halo and was lost in the darkness of the opening. Choo-choo, moaned the train as it passed between the damp walls of the tunnel. Not long after its pumping engines had filled the tunnel with frothy steam, it burst out into the waiting arms of a lush green valley like a massive metal baby being pushed out of a big stone vulva into the waiting arms of an equally massive green midwife. On board the train, a spoon rattled in a teacup, the teacup rattled in a hand, and the hand rattled on the shoulder of a man, a man called Robbie Mulligan. I gave an early draft to my personal trainer, Claire Burns, and it was she who pointed out that I may have been somewhat influenced by our training sessions. Clara Barnes sat up on Robbie 
and started bouncing on him like a person trying to put out a fire with their arse. Her muscular legs flexed like two portly rubber bands and she groaned like a door in a sexy haunted house. Now that's a workout, said Robbie, as Clara made absolute mince meat of his bollocks. Claire eventually finished the book and she ended up liking it in the end. I also promised her the exposure would get her at least 700 new subscribers. So for the love of God, follow her on Instagram. Link in description. I peeled off Fabio's hair for some reason I can't really remember right now. And then I scanned it inside in the Limerick Art College because the Odyssey scanner was fucked. And then Ray stuck the hair back on again. Um, I probably took the hair off so Ray could do that. Anyway, I printed out little Fabio. You can see there that Ray stuck his head on a body that was on the internet. Ray did his magic to it. But I printed it and painted it, so fuck Ray. Fabio! Then I assembled the last few pieces. That's me putting the front of the roller coaster on, which in roller coaster parlance is called the bunty. Then I modelled and printed these little coupling units to join the carriage together. Then I painted the base with black acrylic and assembled the last few bits and pieces. And finally I bought a ghost off the internet and I printed it. Then I painted it and I stuck it in the ghost hole. Fabio Lanzoni was born in Milan in 1959. His father wanted him to stay and inherit the family business. But at the age of 19, Fabio left home to seek his fortune. He worked hard, sometimes shooting up to 16 book covers a day and his efforts were rewarded with exceeding wealth and fame. Then in March 2016, Fabio achieved his greatest success of all, in taking the oath of allegiance, allowing him to weigh in on the important matters as a naturalized citizen of the United States of America and experience the true power of the American dream. But where is your power as you sit there bloodied and shamed? and forced to witness the destruction of your American dream by a Canadian goose. Fabio! The GPS coordinates to this location are hidden within the chapters of The Power of the Strength of the Heart. It's available as an e-book and as an audiobook. There are links in the description. Congratulations to my patrons Andy and Keen who found the Bezos treasure in pirate country in New Quay, Cornwall. I got it! Yeah! I was still at a loss as to what happened on that roller coaster on that fateful day in 1999. I wondered what kind of impact a six pound goose to the face would really have. So I decided the only thing left to do was to make some rubber geese and some rubber Fabios. I've documented the process over on Patreon. Why not give me some support? If I could get a cannon that could shoot a goose at Fabio at 75 miles an hour and compare the damage with the real incident, then I may be able to finally bust this myth. So I asked the guy from Mythbusters to make me a cannon, and he said no. So I asked the other guy, and he said yes. Here we go. Beautiful bird and a beautiful Fabio. Three, two, one. This is fellow model maker and television personality Adam Savage. Adam kindly agreed to make me a 25 foot cannon capable of matching the required speeds. He's made a video discussing the mechanics of the cannon over on his YouTube channel. There's a link in the description. I met Adam in his workshop in San Francisco 
where we filled my goose mould with various densities of ballistics gel and silicone. Then we met in a quarry in Texas to conduct the experiments. I was assisted by independent toy maker Dominic Yard, who you might remember from my last episode. Dominic said my mentioning of his dildo-inspired game had a direct effect on sales, and he said if I ever needed a favour, just ask. So I asked him to drive from his house in Los Angeles to San Francisco and pick me up and drive me all the way to Austin, Texas, which he kindly did. It was a very boring drive, but uh, thankfully I slept most of the way. Anyway, we greased up the ballistics gel goose with some animal birthing lubricant. She goes. <laughs> Range is hot. Then Adam brought the pressure up to maximum banger before letting rip. And three, two, one. <laughs> That's even, I feel like one eye pops better than two. I wanted to get a very clear picture of the moment of impact. So I asked Gavin and Dan from the slow-mo guys to come along and film it using their special slow motion cameras. If you haven't seen their work, I highly recommend clicking on the link below. Not only are they talented boys, but they're also very forgiving and able to let bygones be bygones. Oh, that is gruesome. The lads calculated the speed at 75 miles an hour and we conducted the experiment from different angles to cover all possible trajectories. The results of which were all grotesque. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> and after the ninth iteration, I felt like there was no way on earth a human could take a ghost to the face at that speed and not be horribly disfigured if not well and truly dead. Oh my he just God. got mummified. About that. <laughs> and he lost his eye, so. Perfect. Justice for Fabio. And see, if that had hit me in the face, I'd Mom be- silence for Fabio. He was right. I feel like Fabio was vindicated that day. So to celebrate, I took the whole gang out for some Texas flavored food. And we had a nice time until Dan and I got into a small argument, which turned into a bit of a fist fight. <laughs> Thankfully no one was hurt, with the exception of Dan, and I had hoped that things would be okay by the following day, but uh, when I emailed the slow-mo guys asking for the footage, they told me the files were corrupted. Uh, I deemed this to be bullshit, and that the Englishmen were just keeping the footage, because their feelings were hurt. Nevertheless, I was happy to hang around Aston for uh, another few days during which time I employed the services of a professional who was able to obtain some specific documents that I presented to the slow motion guys, encouraging them to eventually return the footage to me. And with that, I was able to get the fuck out of America. Yeah.